In the last couple of lectures, we learned how to create a custom middleware using request delegate. That means using an anonymous function or lambda expression. So here we are creating a middleware by passing a request delegate to this use method. In the same way, here also we are creating a middleware by passing a request delegate to this run method. So a request delegate is basically an anonymous function or an arrow function. And we call it as request delegate because that function, that method is going to handle the request which is coming on the server. Now, when we are using the lambda expression in order to create a middleware, in that lambda expression, if we are writing few lines of code, for example, here we are writing only two lines of code. So in that case, using the lambda expression in order to create a middleware is okay. But if a middleware is going to have a lot of code, for example, if it is going to have 50 or hundreds of lines of code, in that case, using a lambda expression is not a best practice. So in that case, what we can do is, instead of creating that middleware using a request delegate, using a lambda expression, we can create a middleware class and in that middleware class, we can define a middleware function. And that middleware class is called as custom middleware class. So a custom middleware class is used to separate the middleware logic from a lambda expression or anonymous function to a separate reusable class. Let's see how we can create a custom middleware class in ASP.NET Core. So inside this project, I'm going to create a new folder for that you can select this add and from here you can select this new folder and let's call this folder custom middleware so inside this folder we are going to keep all our custom middlewares all right now inside this folder let's go ahead and let's create a new item for that here let's select this new item and here we want to create a class so you can see the class is already selected let's call this class maybe my middleware okay you can name this class anything based on what your middleware is going to do but here since i am giving you a demo of a middleware that's why i'm simply calling it my middleware all right let's click on this add button so here this class has been added and if you see this class is present inside this namespace middleware dot custom middleware so this namespace is different from the namespace in which this program class is this program class will be in the namespace middleware all right let's go to our my middleware class now in order to make a class a middleware class the first thing which we need to do is we need to make that class inherit from i middleware And when we make a class inherit from this I middleware interface, it enforces us to implement a method called invoke async. So here, let's go ahead and let's create a public method. And it is going to be of type async and it is going to return task. And the name of the method is invoke async. Okay. Now you can also create this method by simply right clicking on this interface and here you can say quick action and refactoring and then here you can say implement interface okay so in this way also you can create this invoke async method and if you notice this invoke async method is taking two parameters the first parameter is of type http context and the second parameter is of type request delegate so basically this invoke async is going to act as a middleware function and that middleware function is going to receive an instance of http context and also an instance of request delegate and inside this invoke async we can write our middleware logic so here you can have before code so any logic which you want to execute before calling the next method then you can call the next method and when you're calling the next method there you need to pass the context object okay and since it is going to run asynchronously we also need to use the await keyword here and if we want to use this await keyword here we need to specify 
a sink right and after this you can write after logic so the logic which you want to execute after the next method has been executed basically this next method is going to call the next middleware in the request pipeline so once that next middleware is executed the control will reach back to this middleware function so after that if you want to execute any logic you can write it here after the call of this next method and this should be it okay so here let's go ahead and let's write some logic in order to manipulate the request or response so here what i will do is i will simply add some body to the response for that let's use this context object on that let's try to access the response object and on that response object we want to add some body so for that we can use this write async method all right and to this write async method here let's say custom middleware started okay and this write async is going to run asynchronously so we want this method to finish its job first for that we can use this await keyword so once the job of this write async is finished that means once it has written this text in the response body then only we want to move to the next line so that's why we are using this await keyword here and after that we are calling the next method so in that case the next middleware in the request pipeline will be called and once that middleware is executed again we want to do something on the response so again we want to add some more body in the response so i will copy this line of code and let's paste it here okay and here let's say finished all right now here we have created a custom middleware class now in order to use this custom middleware class we need to register it as a service for that we need to go back to this program.cs file and before we are calling this build method on this builder that means on the instance of this web application builder we need to register this my middleware as a service and in order to register a service we use an instance of web application builder class so here on this builder which is an instance of web application builder class we have a property called services the service is basically a collection so if i hover over here you can see that it is of type i service collection okay so this services can hold a list of services that participates in the dependency injection we will talk about services in great detail in our coming lectures for now just understand that we can use this services collection in order to add some services for our application so when we add services for our application in that case asp.net co inject those services as a dependency okay and that is called as dependency injection so we are going to talk about services and dependency injection in great detail now here in this services we want to add our custom middleware class as a service for that on this services i'm going to call a method called add transient now here to this add transient we need to specify the middleware which we want to add and we need to specify it as a generic parameter so the name of our custom middleware class is my middleware right so let's use it and in order to use this my middleware we also need to import this middleware dot custom middleware namespace because it is this namespace in which this class is defined so here we have registered our custom middleware class and since we have added our custom middleware class using this add transient method what asp.net co is going to do is it is going to inject an instance of this class into the program class whenever needed by using dependency injection so here we are registering our custom middleware and let's move this using statement at the top so i'll cut it from here and let's paste it here Okay, so in the first step, we created our custom middleware class. Inside that, we defined this invoke async method. So this invoke async method is going to act as a middleware function. Then we registered our custom middleware class in the program class at this line. Finally, we want to use our custom middleware class. So here we are calling our middleware one. Here we are calling our middleware two. Let's go ahead and let's call our middleware after this middleware two. And we will call it as middleware three. 
and this last middleware which we are defining using this run method let's call it middleware 4 and here let's define our middleware 3 and our middleware 3 is going to be our custom middleware class so in order to use our custom middleware class on this app we need to call a method called use middleware here we cannot use use method here we need to use use middleware method and there we need to specify our custom middleware name in this case my middleware and we need to specify it as a generic parameter all right so here we are using our custom middleware class so now what will happen is when this program will run and when a new request come to the server first of all this middleware will be executed for that request after that since we are calling this next method from within this first middleware the next middleware in the request pipeline will be called so next middleware in the request pipeline is this middleware middleware 2 so this middleware will be called and from within this middleware also we are calling this next method so in that case the next middleware in the request pipeline will be called and the next middleware in the request pipeline is this middleware so this middleware will be called the control will reach to this function to this method and here first we are adding this text in the response and then we are calling this next method so again this next method will call the next middleware in the request pipeline and the next middleware in the request pipeline is this middleware so this middleware will be called inside this middleware we will add this text in the response body and it will return so when it will return it will return back the method from where this middleware was called and that middleware was called from within this method okay so the control will reach here and after this next method we have some logic so that will also get executed this logic will add this text in the response body and after that the execution of this middleware is also complete so now the request will reach to the middleware from where this middleware was called and this middleware was called from middleware 2 from here by calling this next method here also the execution of this middleware function is complete so now the control will reach to the middleware from where this second middleware was called that means to this first middleware and here also the execution of this first middleware is complete so now we should see a response in the web page and in the response we should have this text first then we should have a line break then the control will go to this third middleware this third middleware is our custom middleware which we have defined inside a custom class so in this middleware first this text will be added it will be appended to the response body then we are calling the next middleware that means the control will go to this middleware which we have defined using this run method there this text will be added in the response and then the control will reach back to this middleware so in the last we should also see this text in the response body let's actually add some line breaks after each of these so here let's say backslash n and let's do the same thing here let's do that here as well okay and we are already adding two line breaks in between middleware 1 and middleware 3 so let me put the breakpoints here and let's see how the control will go so let's run this program so as you can see first the control has reached to the first middleware in there let's press f10 so this text will be added in the response body let's press f10 again this will call the next middleware in the request pipeline so it will call the second middleware if i press f10 now the control should reach to the second middleware in there two line breaks will be added in the response body and then we are again calling the next method so the next middleware in the request pipeline will be called so the next middleware in the request pipeline is this middleware 3 the middleware which we have created using custom middleware class so if i press f10 now the control should go to that middleware and as you can see the control has reached to this middleware in there if i press f10 again this text will be added in the response body if i press f10 again now the next middleware in the request pipeline will be called so if i press f10 the control should go to this fourth middleware 
the middle way which we are defining using this run method. Let's press F10. Again, this text will be added to the response body. Let's press F10. So the execution of this middle wear 4 is complete. So the control will reach back to that middle wear from where this middle wear 4 was called. That means to the third middle wear. Okay. And here in the third middle wear, after the execution of the next middle wear is finished, we are adding some more text to the response body. Now, if I press F10, the execution of this third middle wear is also complete. So now the control will reach to the previous middle wear from where this third middle wear was called. That means to the second middle wear. All right. And here the execution of second middle wear is also complete. If I press F10, the execution of second middle wear will also complete. So now the control will reach to the first middle wear because the first middle wear is the one which called the second middle wear. And after that, the execution of the first middle wear is also complete. So in this way, all the four middle wears have been executed on the incoming request. So now we should see the response. If I press F10, you will notice that the breakpoint of the first middle wear is again hit. That's because the browser also makes a default request for the fav icon. So this time this breakpoint has hit because a new request for the fav icon has been made. Okay, so we can ignore this. Let's simply click on continue. And here you can see the response from all the middlewares. Okay, so in this lecture, we learned how to create a custom middleware class. We create a custom middleware class when the middleware function can have a lot of code. In that case, it's always a good practice to separate that middleware function and define it inside a class. And using this approach, we have two advantages. First of all, when we define a middleware class, in that case, that middleware becomes reusable. We can use it on multiple places. And second of all, the code is more readable and more maintainable. Alright, so this is all from this lecture. If you have any questions, then feel free to ask it. Thank you for listening and have a great day.